Good evening, I call the January 19th Hampton City School Board reorganizational meeting to order. Uh, this is the, uh, as indicated, the reorganizational meeting of the Hampton City School Board. As such, I will preside over the meeting until the election of a chairperson of the Hampton City School Board for the 2022 school year, which will occur momentarily. Ms. Bowers, uh, please call the roll. Mr. Fonja. Here. Ms. Banks Gray. Here. Mr. Kilgore. Here. Dr. Mason. Here. Mr. Samuels. Present. Dr. Woodhouse. Here. Ms. Sherry. Here. Let the record reflect that all school board members are present. At this time, we'll move forward with our opening. We'll have our invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. We're delighted to have with us this evening uh, Kingston Talbot, uh, a current fourth grader at Phillips Elementary, uh, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance as well as our invocation. Let's welcome him at this particular time. Please come forward. Thank you. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So today I have a poem that I wanted to read for you guys. It's about my favorite subject, science. Science, thinking like a scientist. I want to think like a scientist, absorb, observing animals, earth or sky. I want to ask good questions, wondering how and what and why. I want to make smart guesses, hypothesizing what might happen and when. I want to do cool experiments, testing my thinking again and again. I want to write up all my data, write, recording pictures, chart, or words. I want to think through all I've done, drawing conclusions about what I've learned, wondering, asking, testing, concluding. This is what scientists do. If you want to think like a scientist, then you must do them do then you must do them too. Great job. <laughs> Kingston, you did an outstanding job and no question that you're going to become a scientist and we're <laughs> proud of you. Exactly. Uh, let me just ask you to uh, share some, something that's exciting in terms of school and, uh, or during your spare time. What do you find it to be exciting? I really just like finding it exciting, just playing with my friends and my family. Great, well, you know what? That's a wonderful thing to do. So thank you for sharing with us this evening. And I know that there's, that you probably have some special guests with you. Uh, so we're gonna give you that opportunity to introduce and ask some special guests to stand. So would you like to do that at this time? Yes. Please. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> What would we do without Mama, right? <laughs> and, and some administrators, great. Ms. Jones. So you have some great supporters there, and uh, again, you did an outstanding job, and we're so proud of you, and delighted that, um, uh, that you were with us here in Hampton City Schools and uh, to learn a little bit about what you find to be exciting. So thank you for being with us this evening and to your mom, thank you for being present. I want to ask if there are board members who would like to make comments at this time before we move forward. Nothing other than to say I'm definitely sure 
that you're not only going to be a scientist, but one of the top ones we're going to all be reading about very, very soon. Thank you for coming, and thank you, parents, for sharing him tonight. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. And I know that uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you desire to do so, uh, but we want to thank you for coming again. Thank you for doing a great job and for being present. So <laughs> you can be seated at this time. Or you can stay and help me conduct this meeting. I, I, I don't have any issues with that either. <laughs> That's right. Let me ask uh, if we have a motion to adopt the January 19th, 2022 school board meeting agenda. So move. Second. Uh, I've heard a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Kilgore probably Mr. has this Mr. Motion. Chair, I'd, I'd ask that we amend the motion to add an action item 8.08 to address actions briefed by the school board attorney in closed session. Okay. I'm going to second to amend the, uh, the agenda to include 8.08 with a under, second. Yeah, under other action. Under other action. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. And Dr. Mason has made a second to that. Any di other discussion? Okay, if not, Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. And uh, that is to certainly amend the agenda for January 19th, the 2022 uh, school board meeting. Ms. LaFonja? Aye. Ms. Banks-Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry. Aye. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move forward and uh, have some recognitions. And I know that uh, Ms. Kelly Gorrell and uh, Ms. Ann Chair is going to come forward and share with us, uh, Chairman Cherry, in terms of the uh, reorgan uh, in terms of the recognitions at this time. And it's an exciting time for us in Hampton City Schools. It continues to be so. So. We'll turn it over to Ms. Gorrell at this time, and then Ms. Cherry, if you'll join. Thank you, Dr. Smith. And thank you, Chairwoman Cherry, Vice Chair Mason, members of our school board, and members of our Hampton City Schools family. At this time, Ms. Cherry, would you please proceed to the microphone for tonight's recognition? <clears throat> Well, I'm very excited about tonight's recognition, and Ms. Cherry is as well. Um, this evening, we are provided the opportunity to celebrate student athletes as well as some special coaches from Phoebus High School, our Phoebus's 2021-2022 football team. So at this time, I'd ask for Coach Jeremy Blunt, his assistant coaches, Coach Wilson and Parker, as well as his two captains, Tyene Haynes and, I'm sorry, Mark Wagner and Tyrone Taylor, to please come forward and join me beside the podium. Mm. And before I go on, I would like to let everyone know that the rest of our Phoebus football team and coaching staff is joining us via Zoom so that they are watching this recognition this evening. So I'd like to begin actually with the regional championship game. On Saturday, November 27th, Phoebus High School defeated <coughs> York High School at Darling Stadium with a score of 27 to three, which had them win the class three region A championship game. So I think that definitely deserves a round of applause. So not only did they re win the regional game, next they played in the state semifinals on December 4th, again at Darling Stadium, and they took on Brentsville High School. And not only did they win the state semifinals, but they shut them out with a score of 43 to zero. Oh, that was a beating. <laughs> Then they got to move on to the final game of the year. On Saturday, December the 11th, they traveled to Lynchburg, Virginia and visited Liberty University where they played Liberty Christian High School for the championship. And again, they took home a win with a score of 22 to 14. So that's, even, that's the biggest round of applause, everybody. Before I let these gentlemen join you on stage, I'd actually like to everybody to direct their attention to the screen to view a few highlights from that championship game.
It's coming, I promise. Now that was exciting because we were talking about interceptions after interceptions. <laughs> we were talking about good blocks. We were talking about run backs. You guys were awesome. I would like you all to join me on the stage right now, coaches and the captains. I will be presenting you with a certificate tonight, but before I do that, I want to share just a few more things about these fabulous Phoebus Phantoms. As you can see, Phoebus had quite a successful year. They finished the season with a record of 14 and one. This is Phoebus' eighth state football championship and the first since 2011. Let's have a round of applause <laughs> just for that. <laughs> Not only did they win the state championship, which is certainly quite an accomplishment, the Phantoms actually earned individual awards at the state level, and that's major. Mm -hmm. The following players were named to the first team football team. Now listen to this. Mark Wagner, Michael McMullen, Kamari Gray, Jalen Mayo, Anthony Reddick, Donald Gatlin Jr., Emerson Hurd, and Jordan Bass. All of those were from Phoebus and were named to the first team state. That's amazing. Mm. Usually you'll have a couple and maybe another one sneak in there, but we were killing it, right? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Additionally, Kamari Gray was named the Offensive Player of the Year. Donald Gatlin Jr. was named the Defensive Player of the Year. And our state championship coach, Jeremy Blunt, was earned the State Coach of the Year Award. Therefore, on behalf of our Vice Chair, Dr. Mason, the Hampton School Board, our Superintendent, Dr. Jeffrey Smith, and all who call themselves people of Hampton City Schools who love champions. We just want to say, we appreciate what, you do, what you've done. We're glad that you brought such power and presence to this school division and that you brought a state championship as well. We wanna honor you with two banners, but I'm gonna unfold one and also a statement of achievement from Hampton City Schools for a job well done and for capturing the Class Three State Championship. I can tell you nobody was more proud, and I've gotta give her a shout out, than our athletic director, Beth Mayer. That's right. <laughs> she, she, was, she was your biggest cheerleader, and she was making sure that Phoebus was represented well, and in turn, you all represented us well, because some of the words that we heard about the Phoebus High School football team were not just outstanding, were not just they are fast, was not that they are, they're good at one offensive play or defensive play. What we heard was you all had class. Mm -hmm. And that word resounded throughout the Virginia High School League, and I wanna thank you just for that and your leadership. <laughs> now before 
before I give you a certificate, Coach Blount, you wanna say a few words? <clears throat> um, first of all, uh, thank you all for acknowledging us tonight, uh, Dr. Smith and the entire central office and school board members, as well as Dr. Haynes and you know, Ms. Mayor, we truly appreciate all the support that we, that we had this season. We felt it, um, it was obvious, and we were happy that we were able to go out and represent Hampton City Schools so well. So thank you for giving us the support, and you know, hopefully next year we can do it again. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And thank you for bringing it home. Now, we're going to open one of these banners. I'm gonna ask school board members to come up and join us in this picture. But before we do that, if there are any family members of the team, if there are any people from an administration for Phoebus, all people who are here to support them tonight, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Now, I'm gonna get this banner. <laughs> Just so you guys can see it, Phoebus Phantom 2021 Class 3 State Champions. Let's give another round of applause. <laughs> Board members and superintendent, please come up for the photo. We're going to join you, honey. Say, hold that trophy up so we can see the trophies too. <laughs> Now, as they're coming up, I'm going to read the certificate, which says, Certificate of Achievement from the Hampton City School Board. Congratulations. This certificate is proudly presented to Phoebus High School for winning the Virginia High School League Class Three State Football Championship, 2021-2022, presented January 19th, 2022, signed by Dr. Jeffrey Smith, Superintendent, and Ann Stevens-Cherry, Chairman. Congratulations again. Dr. Woodhouse, Ms. Afonja, make sure we can see you. There you go, <laughs> behind those tall football players. All right, ready? Excellent, thank you. Thank you and congratulations again. And as they're being seated, I just want to add one personal note. I have known Coach Blunt to be a leader who exemplifies not only excellence, but respect. You know, they say respect has to be earned. It is certainly earned when it comes to Coach Blunt, even throughout the Virginia High School League. People honor him because he's true to his word, he knows how to treat students, mm -hmm. and he is well respected among your peers. I just want to say thank you for leading that example. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. thank you all. And here's your certificate card. Oral and Madam Chair, thank you so very much for that rec uh, recognition. Again, Excellent. let's give the, uh, our young people another hand as we recognize the Phoebus Phantom. So thank you. It's always exciting. It is. <laughs> we'll now move into the organizational meeting of the Hampton uh, City School Board, the Hampton uh, School Board. I shall elect one of its members as chairman. Is there a motion for the chairmanship of the Hampton City School Board for the 2022 school year? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Th uh, thank you, Dr. Smith. I would like to nominate as chair, Dr. Richard Mason. Thank you. Second. Is there a second? Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I just wanted to just point out a couple of things Approximately six months ago, when this board determined that they wanted me to once again serve as chair, that was done for the season which is ending today. Because I said I would serve until January, and January is here. But during that time, I have to be honest, this board, in conjunction with the superintendent administration, we've done some wonderful things. And we have jailed so well, and it is time now, I feel, 
to pass that baton because Dr. Mason served as the vice chair. And in every meeting we had with the superintendent, he was there. In every encounter we had that, you know, we had challenges this year, he was part of it. And I feel completely confident that he will make for a wonderful chair as we move forward because I think it's time for some new blood. And um, it probably with all the challenges we have, Dr. Mason be, be shed. But um, I can tell you, I hope this board joins me um, in this nomination. Thank, thank you. Thank you so very much. Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Motion carried. Congratulations, and Mr. Chairman, Dr. Mason, my pleasure. We're going to do all, all the COVID the pieces. COVID pieces. <laughs> Make sure that your little fingers are protected. Okay, thank you, Dr. Smith. And with that, we're going to pass. You can come over here. I will turn my mic off. You ready to get me out of here, Ms. Banks Gray? <laughs> she said, grab that nameplate. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. We're having too much fun tonight. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. situated here. Thank you all very much. Uh, first, certainly want to thank my fellow board members for uh, being comfortable with my confident and confident in my ability to lead this division. Um, and in, in conjunction with our superintendent and the division leadership team, I take this task not lightly at all as we plan to move our division forward in a healthy manner, making sure that we're keeping everyone safe. That's the most important thing, while at the same time continuing the academic excellence that Hampton City Schools is known for. I especially want to give a thanks to Ms. Cherry. Um, as a former chair, she has done an outstanding job. I've learned quite a bit from her. So I definitely want to thank you for your leadership. Likewise, I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Jason Samuels and Mr. Joe Kilgore as their role in the past as chairs. They've provided me with some great insight since coming onto this board that I definitely plan to continue to utilize them as a support system uh, moving this board forward. All right. So moving along with the agenda, item 3.02, the board shall elect one of its members as vice chair. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Samuels. I make a motion to nominate Ann Cherry for um, the vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Woodhouse. The motion has been made by Mr. Samuels and seconded by Dr. Woodhouse to nominate and elect Ms. Ann Stevens Cherry as vice chair in the discussion. May I share something, Dr. Yes. Mason? Yes. Uh, chairman Mason, I have to get used to that. <laughs> I, I, I made the motion so this board can continue to maintain some continuity maintain that experience that Ms. Cherry has, <coughs> and not just as a chair and now as a vice chair, but in her position as a, the PR for Hampton City School for a number of years. And also for the internal and external knowledge that we will continue to need as um, Dr. Mason serve as the new um, chair. I think it is necessary for Ms. Cherry to be in that position to continue to provide some support and some guidance uh, for Dr. Mason as we continue to work with Dr. Um, Smith uh, and to complete, to um, um, maintain um, the school. So thank you, Ms. Cherry, for your willingness to um, continue to serve this um, board and also now as the vice chair. I appreciate it. I truly, truly appreciate it. Well, I'm kind of waiting on the vote. <laughs> 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 okay.
Okay, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Samuels. I appreciate, I appreciate those remarks, seriously. Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye, motion carries. Congratulations, Ms. Cherry. Thank you, I look forward to working with you. Once again. Yet again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, thank, and thank you seriously, Mr. Samuels, for that, because you know you, I served as your vice chair, and um, we went through some times, but we handled them because we were such a great team. So the respect I have for you is, is imminent, and I appreciate those words, thank you. And, and I'd like to say it's definitely been a pleasure working with Ms. Cherry as the chair um, she is providing lots of insight, lots of corporate knowledge of Hampton City Schools, but great leadership. You know, the experience that she has brought to the table, I've been able to glean some great things from her. So thank you very much, and I look forward to working with you in this reverse role. All right. thank, thank you. Thank you. Tag team. Yes. <laughs> All right. So moving forward, uh, item 3.03, .03, the board on the recommendation of the superintendent shall appoint Carolyn Bowers as clerk of the school board. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second that the board on the recommendation of the superintendent shall appoint Carolyn Bowers as clerk of the school board. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. I'm sorry, Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you and congratulations, Ms. Bowers. And we really appreciate all of your hard work in keeping yeah. us together. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. Item 3.04, the school board on recommendation of the superintendent shall appoint Sally Sedinger as a deputy clerk of the school board. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Mr. Samuels? Mr. Samuels? Mr. Samuels? Aye. <laughs> Dr. Woodhouse? Uh, aye. There's a delay, aye. Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. Item 3.05, the school board shall fix a time, date, and place for holding regular meetings for ensuring this, for, ensu for the ensuing school year. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye, motion carries. Item 3.06, the school board on recommendation of the superintendent shall appoint Dr. John Caggiano as a superintendent's designee to attend meetings of the school board and represent the superintendent in his absence. So Mr. moved. Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Before Aye. we go on that, could I just say something? I didn't yes. do a discussion. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank Dr. Caggiano. He is always there when Dr. Smith is working on other projects. I have never once texted him where he did not text me back within 60 seconds, seriously. Mm -hmm. So I really want to say how much I appreciate how you you stand right in there and keep the ball rolling when Dr. Smith is doing a myriad of other things. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cherry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chairman Dr. Mason, I would like to also acknowledge that mm -hmm. um, Dr. Um, Kajiana has been one of the cornerstone figure in, in the leadership as, the, as a member of the executive team. Absolutely. And he is tremendously respected by the board for his leadership and his knowledge. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Mm -hmm. Yes. Item 3.07, the school board on recommendation of the superintendent shall appoint Kelly Goral as freedom of information officer. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 
It's been properly moved and seconded. Discussion? She's the best. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. Okay, that's my Second time. that. <laughs> 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 and I agree. Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Sherry? Aye. Ms. Lafonja? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. The motion carries. Congratulations and thank you, Ms. Gore. <laughs> All, right. All right, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. 4.01 is the personnel report. 4.02, minutes of the school board meeting of December 1st. 4.03, school board consent to receipt of donations for January of 2022. Is there a motion to take that as a block? So moved. Second. That's been properly moved and second that we accept the consent agenda as a block. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. And at this time, I will turn the meeting over to Dr. Smith for the superintendent and staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it's my pleasure at this time uh, to ask Ms. Ruth uh, to take the lead uh, in terms of presenting this evening. Uh, as you're aware that we certainly have tried to work in a collective way to identify uh, ways to support um, the well-being of our staff. And as you're aware, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and certainly Vice Chair, uh, that you've had an opportunity to weigh in, and certainly members of the board, uh, and to really um, think about how we might proceed as a school division and really focusing and to continue focusing on the well-being of our, of our staff. And so Ms. Ruth, who serves as our Executive Director for Human Resources, will uh, present information uh, this evening. And I think we certainly um, were communicating to staff members uh, for those individuals who may not be present uh, via uh, tuning in to the televised meeting uh, will get this information as well if they've not already received it. So, Ms. Ruth. Yes, thank you, Dr. Smith. Uh, congratulations, Chair Mason and Vice Chair Cherry. Um, and good evening to the rest of you. Um, at our last meeting in December, Ms. Cherry mentioned that we are working on several items designed to support both the physical and mental well-being of our staff members. And I'm here this evening to provide the school board with a brief, oh my goodness, that's the end of the lecture. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Just, do you have any questions? Yes, it was very good. That was very good. Sure. I'm sure the board members are familiar with it, so uh, they've had a chance to review, so just for the viewing audience, but the board members have certainly, as a part of the packet, reviewed this. I'm not sure what but I put to do that. I think I didn't read it in, so sorry. At any rate, yes. I want to share with you a, a few items that we are going to be um, it's doing it again. I wonder if it's just, it's just changing on its own. If you all don't mind, I'm just going to stand in front. Yeah, Dr. Kajiano is going to operate. It's going to serve as the Thank driver. It, it always takes teamwork. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kajiano. Um, so let's get started with the first thing I'd wanted to share with you, and that's calendar adjustments. Um, January 27th and 28th are already scheduled to be teacher work days. Uh, originally, um, well, the 27th is, it was always scheduled to be an unencumbered work day, and the slight change to that is teachers now may now work remotely if they choose to. They can still come into the building if they prefer to work in the school building, um, but they do have the option to work remotely. January 28th, there is a slight change. It was originally scheduled to be a full professional development day, but we wanted to provide teachers with a little bit more unencumbered work time, so we are going to do half a day of professional development because there is important information that we need to share with teachers, um, but a half a day will be for professional development and half a day will be for unencumbered work time. And again, both of those um, may be done remotely or in the building, that will be the teacher's choice. The next change that we've got is um, we care leave and back in November, we introduced We Care Leave when we provided students and staff with 
uh, additional time off during the week of Thanksgiving. And we had talked then about the fact we would come back and review it um, and look at potentially adding more days of week air leave. Uh, so we are going to be doing that. We are adding one day for the third marking period and one day in the fourth marking period. Um, the first day is Friday, March 4th, and it's already an early dismissal day. When we were selecting the days, we did want to be mindful of the impact this leave would have on parents. So both of the days that we've selected were already early dismissal days for our students, um, and now schools and offices will be closed for the entire day for all students and staff. Uh, the second day, which is in the fourth marking period, is Friday, May 27th. That is the Friday before Memorial Day. So it gives a bit of an extension to the holiday weekend. Again, it was already scheduled to be an early dismissal day, or early close day, I'm sorry, for all staff and students, and so now we will be closed for the entire day. All right, next. Um, you, in, in addition to providing employees and students with some additional time to try and, and re-energize and, and refocus, uh, we also have been focusing on adult self-care from both a physical and a mental health perspective. And so I want to share with you, um, you, we have been providing our employees with uh, self-care, mental health, physical well-being, activities and programs since long before March of 2020. Um, and we have increased our efforts significantly to, to provide additional supports you know, since the pan pandemic began. Um, just, I'm gonna name a few of those resources that we have been able to add since March of 2020. Um, we have put in a diabetes management program, which has been a big success. And a lot of these programs are in conjunction with our uh, health and wellness center. They've been a huge support to us over the, well, always, but particularly over the last 22 months. Um, so that's been a, a big success. Uh, also, and this one has probably been the biggest success that we've had, and that's our virtual gardening workshops. They've been a lot of fun. You get this big kit of whatever the garden is that you're developing, um, and you get to, on Zoom, they teach you about how to you know, grow all the vegetables and herbs you need to make your own homemade salsa. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, we have had a winning at losing challenge. We continue to do health coaching. Um, another exciting one has been the virtual healthy cooking classes that we're doing online. So those have been a ton of fun. Um, there are many others. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see that there are two links, one that says self-care resources and one that says activities and programs. I forgot that when you convert this to a PDF, the links no longer work. But as Dr. Smith mentioned, um, I am sending out an everyone email after this presentation, so it'll go to all employees, and the links will be active in that presentation, or in that email that is sent out, and, and you all will get a copy of that email. So you'd be able to look at, um, link, uh, click on the links if you want more information about the programs that we've got in place. Um, one of the new things that we have added since March of 2020 is we now have a Cigna EAP counselor who actually conducts counseling sessions out of the Health and Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, technically, they're all online um, through Zoom, but she, she is housed at the Health and Wellness Center. Um, it, same rules apply in terms of confidentiality. We don't know when employees go. It just makes it a lot closer to home and easier to get an appointment by having a counselor located mm -hmm. at the Health and Wellness Center. And folks can just dial that, that phone number that's on the slide um, and schedule an appointment. So we're super excited about being able to offer that. And then this um, is a new partnership that we are going to be entering into effective February 1st of this year, um, we will be partnering with Care Solace uh, to um, quickly connect staff as well as, and this to me is the exciting part, it's not just for staff, it's also for students and all their families. Um, 
so that we can quickly connect them to quality mental health and substance abuse treatment program or providers. Um, the service is available 24-7, 365 days a year. That includes when we're on summer break, winter break, holidays, weekends, doesn't matter, they're available um, to provide assistance. And we will have additional information that is coming out soon um, for, for all of our employees. So we are very excited about that. And now, if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Caggiano. Any questions? Any questions from board members? Ms. Afanja? I have a question. I'm just really super excited to hear about these wellness activities mm -hmm. for our staff. Um, I just think that is, 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 is critical right now. It's very yep. critical. And so I'm really excited about it. How often is the um, garden workshop and the cooking classes? Is that like monthly, weekly? So we've probably had I don't know, they're probably more like quarterly. I think the cooking classes have been monthly. There's an everyone email that goes out. Um, I do know we probably, we offered four or five during that, that, that first summer in 2020. Mm -hmm. And we've probably been doing about one a quarter, I think. And they, they fill up very quickly. But yeah, there's an everyone email that goes out. You sometimes they go they go into my spam. So I have been too late to <laughs> sign up for more than one of them. Um, but yeah, I would love to sign up for it myself. I guess I'll have to be quicker to the draw next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments from board members? Ms. Banks Ray. Yes, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, I actually would like to, I don't have a question, but just a, a, a comment. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Ms. Ruth, amazing presentation as, as always. Um, I just want to thank you and the entire Hampton City School Division, um, Dr. Smith, um, for taking such proactive steps in staff well-being. Um, it really does pay to invest um, time and resources into staff well-being and being mindful of mental health concerns. So I just applaud you all for taking those um, proactive steps. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Ms. Chair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say that those We Care Days are going to be huge mm -hmm. for our staff. And, and, and I love it because that impacts not just our teachers, but our cafeteria staff, mm -hmm. our bus drivers, mm -hmm. everybody. And I just think that that is gonna be so huge of a statement mm -hmm. coming from this division that says we care because we're not just saying it, yeah. we're showing you that we do in, in, mm -hmm. in different ways. So thank you, Dr. Smith, for that cool. leadership piece. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Samuels. Um, Chairman Mason, thank you. I, I just wanna echo um, um, the, what Ms. Cherry said about the importance of having these days off. And mm -hmm. so, you know, staff member can, um, practice self-care and how what it was very strategic in the days that were um, provided to the staff such mm -hmm. as the day before that friday before the memorial day mm -hmm. um, weekend and so forth and so i know a lot of thought was put in place um, to support um, the needs of our families and um, teachers as we all know that these are unprecedented times mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Our families and teachers have many, many challenges that they face on a daily basis. This, their stress level is through the roof. And then they can utilize these four days just to relax, decompress, mm -hmm. and take care of themselves and have some mental wellness. So Dr. Um, and Dr. Smith, Ms. Robin Ruth, I know you all put some great thought into this and I think it's, it's gonna pay dividends um, for the school division. So once again, just thank you so much for that. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, thank you Mr. Thank Chair, you and thank much. you, Ms. Ruth. And again, uh, to say to the board, thank you for your leadership as well, and uh, we appreciate your guidance and your continued support uh, as we move in this direction, and uh, certainly, as I said, the leadership that you provide as a board to make certain that we continue to focus our energies and our, our efforts in this in this area. So, um, and thank you. I say to uh, Ms. Chair, uh, Vice Chair, and to our Chair, uh, as we met um, for 
our one-on-one -on -one discussions. Thank you for your leadership and, and suggestions and with the full board as well. So thank you and your guidance in that regard. We'll move now to the budget forecast uh, for the 2022-2023 school year. It's difficult to believe that we're talking about budget <laughs> forecast, but I know that we have Miss Branch and she's more than capable of talking about uh, the budget forecast and to guide us through uh, the discussions this evening. So Miss Branch. So good evening and congratulations Chair Mason and Vice Chair Cherry. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. So I am here to celebrate as a former pop singer said, Andy Williams, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And for me, that's budget season. <laughs> so I just wanna, um, Dr. Smith, school board members in the Hampton community, tonight I will be presenting a budget forecast for the fiscal year 2020-2023 budget. So the, in tonight's presentation, I will go over Hampton City Schools fund structure. We'll also look at the budget development process, and then we'll continue to look at the school board's priorities for next school year. Also, what our revenue sources are, the local composite index, average daily membership. Then we'll go into Governor Northam's budget proposal, and then we'll talk about expenditure pressures and also next steps and key dates. So just to kind of give a baseline foundation of the Hampton City Schools budget. So our budget is comprised of seven different distinct <laughs> funds. And I'm actually gonna start at the top with the school operating fund or fund 50, which comprises our main operations. So I like to think of this as this is where teacher salaries are, instructional assistance, and the classroom instructional supplies and everything that's needed to run the school division. Going clockwise, fund um, 51, food and nutrition services. This is where we have all of our cafeteria operations across the school division. Next, we have the fund 60, reimbursable projects. This is where we house all of our grants that are awarded to the school division. So for example, Title I, Title II, and more recently, our federal pandemic relief dollars. Rental income fund, or fund 65, this is the fund that we utilize to house all of the activity related to our long-term rental agreements for space and property within the school division. Then we have our athletics fund, fund 94. So all of the athletic programs in our school across the division, the revenues and expenditures are accounted for within this fund. Next to last, Student Activity Fund, or Fund 93. So this was a more recent change to our budget to now include all of the activity related to student-sponsored activities at the school level. And then lastly, we have our HCS, Instructional Resource Toolkit, or Fund 95. And this is where we house the activity for our new business where we are uh, um, having customers purchase and also training them on our curriculum that we use here in Hampton City Schools. So each one of these funds goes through a five part budget development process. And that process starts in the August, September timeframe with planning. And then we move into October and November where departments are providing their budget requests for next school year. Our division leadership team or DLT does a review of those requests in the December timeframe. And then where we are currently, it's part of our um, data collection phase, which is our main phase. The budget committee meetings have started and they will continue through February when we get ready to propose the actual budget to the school board in March. And then we have um, city council approval um, that has to happen in May. And then by the end of June, June 30th, we are uploading the new budget for the next school year. So at the same time, when we're asking each department, you know, tell us what your needs are for next school year. We also survey the school board to find out what are the priorities for next school year. So what you see on this slide, these are the most common responses from the survey response. 
So based on maximizing every child's learning, the school board identified the academies of Hampton, student achievement, early reading, reducing class sizes, teacher and instructional assistance, and advanced diploma programs as priorities for next school year. Then when we look at attract, develop, and retain exceptional staff, the school board identified competitive compensation for teachers and support staff, also recruitment and retention, and COVID-19 stipends for teachers as priorities. And then within our last category on this slide, create safe and nurturing schools, school board identified facilities and capital improvements, and then continuing to um, ensure the safety of all of our facilities. So all of these priorities are funded through the various revenue sources that we have within the school division. And I'm actually going to mainly talk about our state revenue. As you can see on this slide, 43% of the revenue that we receive across all of our funds comes from state revenue. We also talk about state sales tax because they typically go hand in hand. And so state sales tax is about 8% of all of our revenue. Now you'll notice that local revenue is 26%. And I just wanted to provide greater context to that percentage. So 26% is when we look at all of the seven funds that I went over earlier in the presentation. But if we were to look at our main operating fund, Fund 50, the local contribution comprises 33% of that main fund. So I just wanted to provide additional context for that. So one of the two main drivers for state revenue is the local composite index. And this is a measure of a locality's ability to fund the standards of quality or SOQ. The main factors that go into this calculation are the true value of real property, adjusted gross income, and also taxable retail sales. And you'll see that the number here of 0.2741 or 27.41%, that is the local composite index for the city of Hampton for fiscal year 2023. The second main driver is average daily membership. And this is one you often hear about. So average daily membership, this is a look at what was the total aggregate daily membership? And then that's divided by the number of days in session between the first day of school to the last day in March. And when we look at our projection for next year, we are projecting a average daily membership of 18,870. Now for comparison, our current year budgeted ADM is 18,813. So you'll see that that is a slight increase of 57. Now to the meat of the presentation. So one of the major events in the data collection phase is the release of the governor's budget. And because that release happens in December of each year, what we have here is Governor Northam's amendments to the direct aid for education. So I wanted to really just look at some of the key recommendations that were made. Um, one thing to note, this is the start of a new biennium or new two-year state budget. So there are also policy um, changes within what was proposed as well. So as we look at Governor Northam's proposed budget, one of the things that happens each biennium is a re-benchmarking process. And I simply like to think of this as, it's just a recalculation of what does it cost to fund education in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now as part of that, this year, what's included in the budget is a hold harmless for school divisions. So some of the data that's utilized, for example, pupil transportation costs, we know that those costs were impacted by the pandemic. They were lower because we were operating virtually for most of last school year. So what was proposed in the governor's budget is to hold school divisions harmless because those expenditures are lower than what they typically would be in a normal school year. So that is included in the state budget proposal. 
Then we also have, of course, the new local composite index that we went over, and then it's also updated for enrollment trends. The budget also includes revisions to state sales tax and lottery estimates. And the big headline that we've all seen in the news, this budget does include a 5% compensation increase for all instructional and support positions that are part of the standards of quality. And as another note, another 5% is proposed in 2024. There's also additional funding for the early reading intervention program. Um, there's quite a bit of additional funding that was added to the state program, and that is because it's proposed to extend that program from kindergarten to third grade to then fund resources for kindergarten through fifth grade. Also included is school construction grants, and it's important to note that that is one-time funding. Some additional items within the budget include the removal of no loss funding. So you'll remember in this um, budget development process last year, I talked about there was a hold harmless, if you will, for the pandemic's impact on enrollment declines. That has been taken out of the state budget in this proposal. There is, however, a one-time hold harmless for the elimination of the grocery tax. So school divisions will not feel the effects of that in the 2023 budget in this budget proposal from the Gover Governor Northam. We also have additional funding for staffing for our English as a Second Language program, additional funding for early childhood programs or Virginia Preschool Initiative, additional at-risk funding. And I always like to bring context to how at-risk funding is utilized. So some of those items are related to dropout prevention, remediation, teacher recruitment, just as some examples. And then the last um, main key point from Governor Northam's budget is that it maintains the Virginia retirement system rates at 16.62%. Now, back in October, the VRS board actually recommended a lower rate of 14.76%, but the state budget that we currently have available to us is based on maintaining that higher rate. So learning all of that information, the natural question is, well, what does that really mean for Hampton City Schools? So looking at this proposal from the governor, Governor Northam, this would be an increase of $25 million to Hampton City Schools. But it's important to note that of that increase, 12.3 million is one-time funding. So as we are working through the budget, we have to make sure that we do not utilize those dollars for reoccurring types expenses. So we have to be very strategic in how we propose the budget to the school board and the community at large. And just another note on this slide, for that 5% compensation increase, uh, we would receive state aid in the amount of $4.7 million to support that. So knowing initially what the state budget could look like, it allows us to then look at, all right, what are those expenditure pressures? Or as Dr. Smith and I have been talking, what are those priorities within the budget? And one of those is always healthcare. We know that healthcare changes from year to year. So that is something that we are working through currently now as part of the budget process. Always compensation for teachers and support staff, which aligns with one of the priorities from the school board. And just for some context for the public, for every 1% raise that the school board gives, that's about $1.58 million. We also, um, have to take into account changes in minimum wage. We know that that could be an impact um, in this budget that we're developing and then also in future budgets as well. And then also rising costs in non-payroll. So we know that inflation is up and it's costing us more to procure the same goods that we procured last year. So we have to take that into account as well. Now this is not the complete list. We are steadily working in this process to identify all of the priorities and the pressures that we need to make sure that we take care of in this budget proposal. So as we look at what are our next steps and then what are our key dates? So we're gonna continue not only to think through and um, quantify 
what those pressures and priorities are, but we also look at where can we find savings because that's a very important part of the budget process as well. And then we also look at how do we align what departments have requested, what our priorities are to what the school board has told us needs to be at the top of the list for next school year. And as always, everything goes back to our strategic plan. We will also hold our two by two meetings with the school board in February. And then also the buddy meetings, which have definitely been a part of the great work and partnership that we have with our city council. And then just some key dates for the community to know. So on March 2nd, this will be the date that we will propose the fiscal year 2023 budget. And that will be for all of the seven funds of the school division. Then on March 9th and March 16th, we will hold two public hearings on the budget. And then March 23rd is the scheduled date for the school board's vote on the proposed 2023 budget. So that concludes um, tonight's forecast presentation. I, I'm happy to answer any questions you all may have. Thank you, Ms. Branch. Thank you, Ms. Branch. Any questions from board members? Very thorough job as usual. <laughs> Great job. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, while we have Ms. Branch um, at the podium there, uh, we'll ask her if she would provide the board uh, with the financial report for this meeting as well. Yes. So good evening again. So tonight um, I'm also presenting the November 2021 um, monthly operating report. At the end of November, our revenues totaled $76.7 million. And this was an increase of about 16% when compared to the previous fiscal year. And that increase is being driven by the timing of when we receive our local contribution from the city of Hampton, which is always based on monthly cash flow needs. And then also we are seeing increased state revenue this year in comparison to last year. For example, the state compensation supplement for fiscal year 2022. Then looking at our cumulative expenditures and encumbrances, they totaled $107.3 million. And this was about a 17% increase when compared to the previous fiscal year. And that is due to an increase in operational and technology expenditures that are associated with expenditures that will roll forward from 2021's budget to 2022. And those are legally, legally obligated funds that those expenditures relate to. And then also for all of the compensation changes that we had between fiscal year 2021 and 2022, those directly impact when we're looking at what has changed from last year. Then for our ADM, I've already mentioned that that is 18,813, but as part of that reforecast in Governor Northern's budget, they are forecasting our March ADM to be 18,757. So that is a decrease of about 56. And when I ran the estimates, that would be an estimated loss in state revenue of about $240,000. Now that number will change because that is not the final March ADM. So as that information is provided, I will report back to, to the school board on what our final March ADM is and the impact to our budget. And as always included in the report, our transfers to and from the technology classification for November mm -hmm. 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, board members? <coughs> All right. Okay. That's the chair, member of the board. That concludes uh, superintendent and staff reports. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Moving along in the agenda, item six hearing of any delegations or presentation of any written communications or petitions so far. Yes, Ms. Bowers, I have four, that's it. <coughs> so Ms. Bowers, would you read the protocol? Citizens are invited to address the school board on matters of public concern about the school division. Speaker forms are available prior to the start of the meeting. If you wish to address the school board, please complete the form and give it to the clerk. Each individual will have five minutes to speak. At the end of your time, you will hear a buzzer. 
All comments shall be directed to the school board. Speakers may not yield their time to another. Speakers should address the school board with decorum on policy issues. Comments shall relate to agenda items or matters germane to the business or duties of the school board. Speakers' comments on individuals at their own risk of violating confidentiality laws and are defaming the subjects of their comments. Neither the school board, the superintendent, nor the school administration will respond publicly to any comments by speakers about individuals. Presentation of resolutions, declarations, proclamations, manifestos, awards, or other similar documents not originated under the auspices of the school board or administration is prohibited during the public comment period. The audience is asked to be respectful of all speakers. Public comment is the school board's opportunity to listen to the speaker. Since our purpose is to hear from you, the board will not engage in dialogue with the audience or whomever is at the podium. Matters requiring a response will be directed to the superintendent for research and response. The superintendent may report back on such matters at a subsequent business meeting session as appropriate. The school board carefully considers your comments as we decide matters that are brought before us. We appreciate your attendance and your input. Thank you, Ms. Bowers. Our first speaker tonight is Ken Elasia. I guess it's on. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ken Elazier. I am uh, represented as a community resident and also uh, represented as uh, Kenneth Elazier, a doctor, as a uh, professional uh, of the community, and my concern as a professional. I'll, I'd like to uh, read what I have to say. It'll be brief. In the interest of accuracy, uh, so I've come to uh, request a special forum to address the implications of the executive order number one issued four days ago by the governor mm -hmm. and its effect on the HSC community and of a particular concerns are these particular or these following directives. Number one, to review and revise or rescind the superintendent's memo uh, 050-19 to remove references to any inherently divisive concepts. I believe this is in reference to CRT. Number two, to review the Ed Equity VA program and to end any portion that promotes inherently divisive concepts. Again, I believe this is related to CRT and possibly to social emotional learning. Number three, to end the Virginia Math Pathway, Pathways Initiative. Number four, to raise standards in K through 12 education and immediately take steps to increase the transparency and honesty of performance measures for public elementary and secondary schools in the Commonwealth and to ensure that such measures do not obscure or conceal disparities in performance among student groups. Those are the four areas that I think are of particular concern that I think could be addressed in a public forum because the protocol here does not allow for response or input, especially from maybe people who have a particular expertise in an area. Uh, this assumes that the Hampton City Schools are engaged in such practices, and these are serious indictments, and I think they should be addressed in an open forum. Uh, the directive uh, given by the governor is that the superintendent of public instruction shall provide a report to the governor and the secretary of education within 30 days. Uh, any policies, programs, training, or curricula that falls within the definition of inherently divisive concepts and within 90 days to identify any necessary executive and legislative actions that are needed to end the use of all inherently divisive concepts in public education. Now, I know in the past you have hosted public forums, and I know because of COVID restrictions and the, you know, the, the, the challenges of the last year or so, it's been almost impossible to get people together as a group. Uh, so may I, just, may, I, may I suggest, excuse me, that the board conduct a special forum where the HSC community can voice concerns discuss and offer inputs. Since the public meeting protocol, protocol does not allow for this elaboration, discussion, or resolution of any concerns. The benefit to hosting such a forum will ensure that HSC practice is transparent and in alignment with the vision, mission, and values of the community. And as such, uh, I thank you, the board, for uh, your consideration. 
And I think it's, it's very important that all sides of the issue be, uh, be heard and that we can address them so that our community uh, will be in alignment with the wishes of the board, superintendent, and with the goals of the State Board of Education. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Alana Branham. Alana Branham. She withdrew. She withdrew. Okay. Ms. Branham withdrew. Next, we have Paul Holt. Mr. Holt? I believe he left. Paul Holt. All right. And last, we have looks like David Weddington Jr. All right, my name is David Whittington, David Don Whittington Jr. to be exact. I lived in Hampton for over 19 years now. I got here, came here from the United States Air Force. They brought me here and uh, retired in 2011. I served on multiple levels of the Air Force staff, from the IG team to the headquarters staff here at HCC and even at the Pentagon for a while. Uh, my concern this evening is primarily uh, just education in general. I mean, we believe that education is important in our family. Uh, we have educators from the uh, daycare area all the way up to the prominent Hampton University where we have a uh, department chair more recently. Um, so it's really important to us, uh, even to volunteer in that aspect where we go out and uh, participate in Burbank Elementary uh, watchdog program to bring more males into the school system to help out. Mm -hmm. So it's important to us. Uh, and I believe uh, after reading something out of the Parent Square uh, concerning Benjamin Sims uh, seventh grade class going back to uh, virtual learning, uh, that brought some serious concern because we all know the challenges of virtual learning last year that we experienced and having uh, a seventh grader as a granddaughter, I, I sat side by side with her last year and watched uh, as they struggle through this virtual learning process. Uh, I will tell you that uh, not only with her uh, as being a seventh grader, but also one with an IEP, uh, it, it was a real difficult issue to watch and try and help her get through. Um, to, to identify the seventh grade class and say this decision has been made without any type of communication with the parents, and if so, we didn't get any, uh, I think that's a mistake. Uh, I do believe that the, the children with IEPs and, and any other type of uh, learning disability, uh, they have their own challenges already. And to put them in front of a screen for an entire school day, uh, I think that's unfair. I think it's unreasonable and is not conducive to a, a, a learning environment that we uh, believe is, uh, is uh, beneficial. So uh, my concern is number one, why are we making this decision without some type of feedback from the parents? And number two, uh, I don't think it's a great path to go down. I don't think the science supports that. I don't see that in the CDC recommendations. I look across the states, I don't see it. And even across the nation, uh, the UK just recently eliminated all their COVID restrictions. So here we are uh, going through this process and the science don't support it. And we're saying the decision is made. So I think that's a mistake. I think that's something that needs to be reconsidered. And, and I think uh, you guys as the board are the ones that need to make that, that determination. So uh, we're concerned and, uh, and that's basically why I'm here today. So thank you for your time and uh, congratulations on your new position. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is deliberation. Item number 7.01, revision of school board policies ABB slash GBB, staff involvement in decision making. 7.02, revision of school board policies ABB dash R slash GBB dash R, staff involvement in decision making regulations. 7.03, 
Revision of School Board Policies BDDH slash KD, Public Comment and Board Meetings. 7.04, Review of School Board Policy CA, Administration Goals. 7.05, Revision of School Board Policy CC, Administrative Organization Plan. 7.06, Revision of School Board Policy DB, Annual Budget. 7.07, .07, Revision of School Board Policy DC, Funding Fund Balance Policy. 7.08, Review of School Board Policy DG, Custody and Disbursement of School Funds, 7.09, Revision of School Board Policy DGC, School Activity Funds, 7.10, Review of School Board Policy DI, Financial Accounting and Reporting, 7.11, Revision of School Board Policy DIA, Reporting Per Pupil Cost, 7.12, Revision of School Board Policy DJB, Petty Cash, petty cash Accounts, 7.13, Review of School Board Policy DN, Disposal of Surplus School Property, 7.14, Revision of School Board Policy JL, Fundraising, and 7.15, Review of School Board Policy KGA, Sales on School Property. And Looks like we'll go to Miss Reeves for the first five. Miss Reeves? Are there any questions? No questions from board members? Okay. It looks like the next one, two, three, four. Well, all of the rest of the policies belongs to Miss Branch. Are there any questions? Any questions for Ms. Branch? All right. Thank you very much. Right. Those items will be moved to action for the next meeting. Which brings us to our items for action. 8.01, VSBA Code of Conduct for school board members. And tonight, board members actually signed the Code of Conduct as presented to us by, v by the VSBA. 8.02, Revision of School Board Policy GDAB, Employment Status Definition. 8.03, Review of School Board Policy GDB, Support Staff Probationary Period. 8.04, Revision of School Board Policy GDBB, Secondary Job Assignment Guidelines. 8.05, Review of School Board Policy GDG, Progressive Discipline. 8.06, Review of School Board Policy GE, Athletic and Co-Curricular Volunteers, 8.07. Review of School Board Policy GEB slash JOH, Acceptance of Electronic Signatures and Records. And Mr. Kilgore will be bringing forth item 8.08. .08. Before we get to item 8.08, .08, I would ask if the board wants to take 8.01 to 8.07 as a block. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we accept and approve items 8.01 through 8.07 as a block. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Ms. Lafonja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. Now I turn the mic over to Mr. Kilgore. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that the school board proceed with the action briefed by the school board attorney in closed session, as well as to acknowledge that the board continues to ratify the 2021 TAC 2022 Instruction and Health Mitigation Plan including updates available on the Hampton Schools website. Second. It's been properly stated and second. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Ms. Lafonja? Aye. Ms. Banks-Gray? 
Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion passed. Moving on to <coughs> deliberation. We have 9.01, and this is deliberation first read, I'm sorry. 9.01, review of school board policy EBAA, reporting of hazards. 9.02, revision of school board policy EBCD, emergency closing. Item 9.03, review of school board policy EBCE, restriction of toxic materials on, in schools. Item 9.04, revision of school board policies EEACC slash JFCC, student conduct and safety <laughs> rules on school buses. <laughs> Item 9.05, review of school board policy EFC, vending machines, sale of food items. 9.06, revision of school board policy FB, facilities planning. 9.07, review of school board policy FE, playground equipment. 9.08, review of school board policy FEA, educational facility specification. 9.09, Review of school board policy F, F E C D A, energy conservation, 9.10, revision of school board policy F E C D B, accommodations for the disabled, 9.11, review of school board policy F E G, construction planning, 9.12, review of school board policy F E G A, supervision of construction, 9.13, revision of school, review of school board policy, FFA, naming new facilities or renaming existing facilities. 9.14, review of school board policy, FG, retirement of facilities. All right, well, good evening, everyone. And I'll try to keep this under three hours and we'll get through this very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Okay, our first policy tonight is uh, EBAA, reporting of hazards. Uh, this is a five-year review with no recommended changes. Uh, policy EBCD, emergency closings. Uh, this is a five-year review. Language was added to be consistent with VSBA policy, which helps to define work expectations for 12-month employees during times of emergency school closings. Uh, policy EBCE, restriction of toxic materials in schools. This is a five-year review with no recommended changes. Uh, policy EEACC, also JFCC, student conduct and safety on school buses. This is a five-year review. Uh, language was added to be consistent with VSBA policy, uh, which more clearly defines the possible consequences for inappropriate school bus riding behavior. Uh, EFC, vending machines, uh, sale of food items. This is a five-year review, no recommended changes. Uh, policy FB, facility planning. This is a five-year review with a minor wording change, or really a title change from deputy superintendent for operations to chief operations officer. Uh, policy FE, playground equipment. This is a five-year review, no recommended changes. Policy FEA, Educational Facilities Specifications. This is a five-year review, no recommended changes. Uh, FECBA, Energy Conservation. This is a five-year review, no recommended changes. Policy FECBB, Accommodations for the Disabled. This is a five-year review again with no recommended changes. FEG, Construction Planning, five-year review, no recommended changes. Policy FEGA, Supervision of Construction. Again, a five-year review, no recommended changes. Mm -hmm. Policy FFA, naming new facilities or rename existing facilities. <coughs> this is a five-year review with no recommended changes. And last but not least, policy FG, Retirement of Facilities. This is a five-year review with no recommended changes. Okay, board members, are, in the, are there any questions for clarification purposes? Thank you, Dr. Bowling. Thank you. All right. That brings us to item number 10 on the agenda, information. Uh, item 10.01, just to notice that Hampton School policies are available to the public online 
at the school at the school division's website, hampton.k12.va.us. Item 10.02. Next meetings. Our next regular meeting will be February the 2nd, right here at Jones Magnet School. And our next work session will be February the 16th at the Rupert Sargent Building at 1 Franklin Street. Are there any other items for information, Mr. Superintendent? Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. Chair. Just once again, congratulations to uh, the Thebes Phantoms. Uh, we're always proud of uh, their great work, not only on the field in terms of football, but also in the classroom on the academic side. And so again, congratulations to them. And uh, just a quick note that I know uh, that individuals, parents, uh, family members, uh, who are uh, certainly viewing this evening. I think we sent uh, a notification out regarding an early close on uh, tomorrow. And so uh, family members, um, and I know that uh, students probably had a chance to retrieve that before um, <laughs> family members did. So, <laughs> so a pretty lengthy uh, communication there and, uh, and we provided uh, families uh, with our status at this particular point. And in addition to that, I wanna take this opportunity to really express to the Hampton City School Board, my appreciation for the condolences expressed uh, in the time of uh, the passing of my father, uh, who I certainly had the honor of uh, eulogizing on Friday. Uh, we had a busy, busy week last week, all the way through Thursday, and we closed um, uh, the week uh, for me, it's certainly on Thursday evening and leaving the office and then traveled home uh, to spend some time with family. But I wanna certainly thank uh, the, the Hampton City School Board for uh, your expressions of kindness and uh, condolences to the family and certainly to me. And uh, thank you for this wonderful fruit basket that I'll get a chance to enjoy. And certainly members of the division leadership team and Hampton City Schools in general. So thank you so very much. Uh, it is a very caring family and I appreciate and uh, certainly cherish um, the time with me in terms of uh, spending time with this board and also with the Hampton City School family. So thank you so very much. You're welcome. All right, any other information from board members? Ms. Chair? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have two quick pieces. Um, one is that I sh had shared with our fellow board, well, our former board member, Ms. Phyllis Henry, mm -hmm. about us um, honoring the Phoebus High School football team tonight. And of course, you all know, if you know Ms. Henry, you know she knows all <laughs> things Phoebus. Yes. And uh, she had shared with me this nugget of information that was just amazing. Um, and that's, remember we talked about the um, championship years of Phoebus High School football, and they, I think they hadn't won one since 2011. Well, Coach Jeremy Blunt mm -hmm. was actually a team player on the first championship team for Phoebus. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just thought that was a real cool nugget to share. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I'd been trying to pull up on my phone um, half the evening, and I just want to read just something very short. I'm not going to read it in, in its entirety, but it speaks to the respect that our teachers in Hampton City Schools are given. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the um, commitment of our teachers across the division. Mm -hmm. and, and that's in a time where they've had turmoil to deal with and right. all kinds of pieces that, that were not of their own making. That's but right. one of our teachers shared with me a letter that she received from a parent and while it's an awesome letter, I think it speaks for all of our mm -hmm. teachers, and I just wanted to share just some clips Absolutely. of it. Mm -hmm. I won't say who it came from because I did not get permission from the parent to name them, mm -hmm. but this letter was shared, and it's to Michelle Johnson, who is a teacher mm -hmm. at Moton El Early Childhood. Early childhood. Mm -hmm. And it says, Ms. Johnson, I hope you don't mind me writing you this note. My wife constantly tells me about her admiration for you and the joy you bring to your classroom. She further extols how you have gone above and beyond the call for your students. As a fellow educator, I have taught at every level from elementary through graduate school. So I know how challenging it is to guide children to, to the administration's goals set forth for you. And I know firsthand how difficult it can be to achieve objectives with children with disabilities. However, just as my child, I'm sure you bring with, they bring with them issues requiring special kinds of love and attention. So I salute you, Ms. Johnson, 
Thank you for your service. Thank you for being so caring for our children. And thank you for putting your health on the line during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the kind of letter probably that could go to each and every one of our, our parents. Don't you agree, Dr. Sarah? Absolutely. Yeah, so I did want to share that because I think, first of all, for that to be said, but second, for a parent to take time and write it. to send that to a teacher mm -hmm. speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Definitely a big thank you to all of our teachers, and that speaks volumes to Ms. Johnson and the work that she's doing over at Moton Early Childhood Center. I did have the opportunity to visit um, right before Christmas, right before the students went home on winter break, and saw all of the things that they were doing over there um, at Moton Early Childhood Center, and they're doing an, uh, an awesome job with our students. And the administration, the principal, is just yeah. fantastic. Awesome. You, I want to say, Dr. Kajal and Dr. Smith, you guys yeah. did a great job in, right. mm -hmm. in making sure that Dr. Haynes, uh, Dr. Barrow, where is she? Yeah. Okay, because I know she likes Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <there she> <laughs> Dr. Barrow, thank you. And I can tell you, when I did go over there, the principal talked about you, and yeah. she talked about mm -hmm. how pleased she was that you had the faith to put in her and that she is gonna do everything she can mm -hmm. to make sure that school succeeds. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. Other information from other board members? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned.